can't start your own business? You already have your own business. If you are earning money, your business is already running. You had to sell your services. That was the job interview. You had to learn the skills to do the job. That was your vocational training. You had to set up your accounts. You have bank accounts. You have to pay bills. You have to manage your home, keep it ordered and maintained. That is your systems and process development. Over time, you will be looking for a promotion for better pay, maybe a better job. So you are always looking to expand your business profits. You already have the skills to run and grow your own business. You are running your own business, but it's probably not making you very happy though because this is the business model you have been taught from childhood. And it isn't actually a very good business model because it is based on selling your time to someone else. So if you want to be happy in your business, you're going to need to switch to a better business model. You're going to need to learn how to create assets and sell them instead of selling your time directly. So instead of thinking I could never start my own business, maybe start thinking I need to improve the way I'm running my business. I need to shift to a better business model. Run your life as a profitable, principle-based business and wealth will naturally follow. Take care of your business. Step one, build your business first. The single most important task we have as adults is creating financial stability in our lives. This is how we support ourselves and our families and provide security and comfort in our lives. And we do this by setting up and running a business. We all do it, no exceptions. We are all running our own businesses. And that business is the engine for our lives. If we make a bad choice about that business, we will struggle financially throughout our lives. We have to have a business that is fit for purpose, that will generate sufficient profits for us to live a comfortable life and gives us the maximum amount of control over our lives as possible. The most common mistake we make with our business is we sell all of our time for money. What we need to do instead of that is learn how to create assets that generate income separate from our direct time input. Why sell one thing to one person when you can sell one thing to thousands of people. But that sounds difficult and risky, you might say. Not at all. There are many ways to start a business and you don't have to leave your current job and you don't need to invest much money at all to start those businesses. What you do need, however, is a dream, a goal, a plan, a structure and a routine. And once you have those things, you then need to diligently carry out the plan. But what sort of business could you start right now? Well, a video-based business is one of the biggest opportunities right now. Here are some types of online video assets you can create. Instructional videos, entertainment videos, educational videos, personal vlogs, inspirational videos, social commentary videos, product reviews, documentary videos, lifestyle videos, podcast videos. And what's important to understand about each of these content types I've just described is that each of those create residual income because you are essentially creating a product that gets consumed and that could be monetized over and over again. And that is far superior to just selling your time. But I don't wanna be on camera, I hear you say. No problem, you don't need to be. Faceless channels, can do very well on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. You don't have to be on camera. Maybe I don't like the sound of my voice. Again, no problem. You can generate an AI clone of your voice and it will read what you type. Now it won't match your voice identically, but what it will do is create a natural sounding voice. So there are no excuses now with all the new AI video production tools that are coming online. And then there's print on demand products. If you're not interested in video products, you can create websites, blogs, digital resources that you can sell as packs or as individual items. The list is almost endless. There is a business out there that you can tap your interests and expertise into and generate residual income from. And everyone has expertise and interests in some area of their life that they can share and monetize. Don't believe me? Drop a comment with your skills and interests in the comments below and I will point you to a business model that you can start. What if I'm a doctor, for instance? I like being a doctor. Even if we have a necessary function in society that we've committed to that involves selling time for money, we can still generate additional income so that we can shorten the time we need to stay in that job. I already have a business. I'm a plumber. 
Even if you run a regular business, you can still create content sharing your expertise that creates additional income sources. Imagine having a source of income that was separate from your main source of income so that when you're ill, you can still support yourself or when you want to be more selective in the work you want to do, you can be free to do so. Maybe you can sack some of those low performing clients that are 80% of the problem and 20% of your income. The important thing to understand is whatever your business is, whether you want to go full entrepreneur or start bringing in entrepreneurial elements, it's important to diversify our income streams and residual income is the most efficient and productive way to do that. So you can apply all the principles I'm going to share in this video, even if you think they don't apply to you. Even if, as I said, you don't want to go full entrepreneur, there's still opportunities here for you. And here is where it gets even crazier if you have a traditional business. You can create marketing content for your business, which you should be doing anyway, and then you can actually make money from just the marketing content itself. You can get paid for creating your own marketing content when you do it in the right way. Platforms like YouTube and Amazon will pay you to advertise on your marketing content as long as you make marketing content that is useful to people and helps them solve a problem. So no matter how you look at it, no matter what type of business you're going to run in your life and choose for yourself, by creating assets, you're going to improve the efficiency and the prosperity of that business. So there is no excuse really. Improve your business, improve your lifestyle. You just have to make that decision to do it. Step two, escape the rat race. Your first objective with your business is to get it to a place where you can cover your basic income needs. This is termed as escaping the rat race. When you have enough money coming in from residual income sources so that you don't have to sell your time directly for money, you have arrived. This is the most important goal because once you have achieved this, it opens up the way for you to start creating genuine wealth. This is because you now own your time and that time can be reinvested back into creating more assets that generate more income and allows you to grow your income levels. Owning your own time enables you to really start generating wealth. This is why genuine wealth is about getting control of your time, not your money. The man who lives on £3,000 a month in a simple house and decides what he does with his time every day of his life is going to have achieved contentment and happiness. Whereas the man who earns £50,000 a month working for a global corporation and is expected to work 60 to 80 hours a week and put his job before his family is going to be miserable long term when the pressures and conflicts start to manifest in his job and in his home. I always find it interesting listening to friends who are in the rat race and they are saying how much they hate their job and how miserable it makes them and how Doris at work is such a pain to work with and how the boss is such a mean person. And yet every time they come up with the same solution to the problem. And it is this, if I get another job, I will be happy. Now here's the thing, they've been saying that for the 20 years that I've known them. And every new job they get is great for the first three months. And then it soon starts to become just another torture chamber that they complain about. You don't fix the problem, but keep doing the same mistakes. If you're miserable in your job, getting another job isn't gonna stop you being miserable. You might get some temporary relief while you're in that honeymoon period, but once you really get going in that job, it's going to just be the same. You're surrendering your time to someone else for them to tell you what to do, and that's going to make you miserable. People have a natural tendency, both men and women, to want to own their own parcel of land and to have their own business. They have just been trained to suppress it or divert it into employment, but deep down they are unhappy. They instinctively know that they want to be in control of their home, their business and their life. And that's why they keep expressing unhappiness with their job. Step three, growing your business without debt. Now, this is one of the most challenging mindsets to change because people have been brainwashed into thinking the only way to grow a business is to grow it on debt. This is a lie. You don't need to borrow to grow a business. Some people want to start a big business right now and will borrow money like it is going out of fashion to get that big business fast. But they're building that business on credit and that means that everything they buy is going to cost 30% more. So that's gonna slow the business down and put too much burden on the business. And then they will tell everyone there is good debt and bad debt. 
And I'm a fan of Robert Kaizaki and Rich Dad Poor Dad, but he's wrong about this. And a lot of people get sucked into this. And everyone's running around and telling you they can build property portfolios and they can buy this and buy that and borrow this and borrow that and build this massive business. And it seems to be working. And then the next recession swings around and all of a sudden they are having to sell off assets just to survive the higher interest rates that typically drive recessions, that and money printing, and they get caught out. And I'm seeing a lot of that right now. There's a lot of videos on YouTube right now about, oh, the government's changed this policy, oh, the banks have put this up, oh, landlords are going to be really hit with this. There's a lot of people going to be struggling very soon. It's going to be a dark time for people that have built their businesses based on debt. And this is the danger of building on debt. When the economy is in a growth phase, debt can be used to generate wealth. But the minute it goes into a recession, that same debt will then become a prison for the borrower. The banks will put up the interest rates, they do it every time. And then people start to sell the houses and the assets and panicking because all of a sudden, that asset that they bought on debt is now a liability that they bought on debt. The property price might go down a bit and all of a sudden the banks can start recalling portions of the mortgage amount in certain parts of the world, the pressure starts to melt. And the only ones that escape from this are the ones who break free from their debt addiction. Do you know who gets rich in a recession? Those people who have those cash-based businesses. That's when they buy properties and other businesses below 20 to 80% of their real value and either strip them of their assets or quickly turn them over and make a quick profit or just build up their portfolio because they're not buying based on debt. You will even hear those with cash getting excited about the opportunity that is coming around the corner right now. People are already talking about it. If you've got money, there's going to be some bargains as people try to strip themselves of assets so that they can deal with the interest and the usury that they've put themselves under just to try and survive. Start watching out for all those houses and business properties that are being offered up for auction. I'm starting to see a lot of them turning up. It's happening right in front of our eyes. It's the same every time. Because when money gets tight, when interest rates go up, people have to sell off their assets and possessions to furnish their debt. And people with cash are just sitting around waiting for desperate people to sell their assets and possessions at below market value. If you've got cash right now, things have never been easier and cheaper to buy because people are desperate to raise cash. Cash rules in a debt-based economy. So how do you do it then? How do you grow your business without injecting loads of debt-laden, interest-heavy cash into it? Well, it's one thing to tell you what not to do, it's quite another to tell you what to do. But let me give it a go. The first thing to do is start a small business. Use what you have to start your business. Make do with the basic equipment you can get your hands on. Control your expenditure keep it to a minimum. Don't go listening to all those YouTubers out there if you're starting a video-based production business that are telling you that 4K video camera that's 4,000 pounds of all these different functions, 4K, 120 FPS is something you need, it's not true. Your iPhone will do. Get a cheap mic, use your iPhone, a cheap set of lights, and you're off. People care more about the content itself that you're creating than what camera you use to create that content. Control your expenditure. Keep your expenditure to a minimum. And this then is the key. If you remember anything from this video, remember this point. Live as simply as you can so that you can maximize as much of your profits as you can. Because the more profits you can maximize, the more profits you can invest back into your business, the quicker the business will grow. So you can invest in productivity and efficiency with the cash you've generated. So once you've built your small business, that one is up and running and it's generating residual income, Take your profits and set up another business, another small business. But maybe this business is a little bit more ambitious in scope, a little bit larger. And when that is up and running, take the profits from both of those businesses and set up another business and keep doing that until you have a solid source of wealth. How do you think McDonald's have become one of the biggest food chains in the world? Because they had one business, they made it very efficient, it became very profitable and from that profit, they then bought another unit. And then from those two units, they buy another unit and so on and so on. And if you look at McDonald's right now, what are they doing? They're automating their McDonald's stores. There was an article the other week about the first fully automated McDonald's that doesn't even have staff. They want that business to be so residual that one person, one manager or two managers can be there on a shift and run the whole thing. So there you can see the principle in action. Now this is also then gonna protect you in times of trouble because 
you've got all these different businesses and that means you've got diversified income streams. So if one goes down, you have another to fall back on. Now, the reason people often borrow is because they want their business to grow quicker than it naturally should, or they want a business that is too expensive for them straight away. They want a big business right now. They want to jump right to the end of the entrepreneurial process because they're trying to get rich. Don't try to move too quickly. You will end up just taking longer to get there or what is typically the case, not get there at all. What doesn't help is every now and again, you'll hear the story, how I became a millionaire and a multimillionaire in three years and two years. And that's very rare. Most people who try this fail. So what some people do to avoid this is they'll borrow on the up and then they'll be lucky enough to time it so that they've divested themselves of their debt and the assets they have are then all cash rich asset but there's very 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 few people do that once you get addicted to debt for building a business you will keep using debt this is why the parable about the hare and the tortoise ring so true they started a race the hare shot off fell asleep halfway got distracted the tortoise just took his time got to the finish line hare wakes up oh what happened tortoise has beat me how did that happen a diligent plan for your business leads to success hastiness always leads to poverty and borrowing money to try and grow your business quickly is hastiness. So if you really focus on controlling costs, reinvestment and increasing profitability, your business will grow and generate genuine wealth. Now, obviously you do need a business that has genuine demand and you need to know how to get that business in front of people so that you can sell your products. But those are not issues if you invest in some good training and commit to a process of education to master those skills. And the fact you're actually watching this video means you have already shown a commitment to education. So well done for that. Step four, enter your dream life. Once you've learned how to build one residual income generating business, you will know how to build another, but this time it will be quicker because you'll have made your mistakes and learned from them. And you've learned the principles that you need to adopt to build a business. And then as you keep repeating this process, you start to generate exponential growth in your profits because you're mastering entrepreneurship itself. This then means you will get to a place where you will be able to buy your dream home, your dream life with cash. Yes, with cash. People do it all the time because they have learned to follow entrepreneurial principles and learn to diligently apply them to a well-defined plan. And with the advent of online entrepreneurship and now the efficiency granted with AI technologies, it has never been easier than to start and grow an online business. Now, it cannot be that easy, I hear people say. Well, first of all, I didn't say it'd be easy, but why do people object to this observably true option in life. Why is it such an alien thought that you can buy a house with cash? Now, this is such an alien thought because we've been trained to go to university, get in debt, buy a car, get in debt, buy a house, get in debt, and stay in debt for 40 or 50 years. Do you realize that a university is just a business that creates assets for the banks? The student enters at the beginning of the production line and leaves the production line with the skills that they need to generate an income for themselves, but they also leave with a massive amount of debt to the banks. So they have a small piece of the pie. The banks also want their part of that piece of the pie. But most importantly of all, they've been trained that debt is the path to acquiring a better life. That debt is a way to acquire an education and to do better for themselves in life. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a brilliant business plan for the banks. A great source of residual income for the banking system. That is one well-trained asset. We are trained to generate debt-based income for the banks for the next 50 years of our life. Now they control you. Control what you do with your time and what you do with your money because they have a cut of everything and they have a say in everything. Upset the banks, they take everything from you. The whole of the Western economy is built on this system of usury, this banking system that indebts people so that someone, the banks, can make a profit from them. But here's the kicker. The people that are in debt are so well trained, they don't even question it a lot of the time. It's only when conditions get really extreme that they start to realize the trap they've been caught up in. And we can complain about the banks all we want. 
But if we enter into that, and I'm talking from personal experience, we are complicit in the system. We can only blame ourselves. So we have to break that conditioning, that mindset, if we're going to find any peace in life, if we're going to find any freedom to be ourselves in life. We have to choose a better way because no matter how hard it is to turn ourselves into an entrepreneur, and it's not easy, no matter how hard it is to overcome our limiting beliefs, and that's not easy either, it is much harder to be a wage slave and submit to a life of servitude to the system and to the banks. There is a big highway that everyone is slowly marching down. They're all packed tightly together. And besides the highway is a small dirt track that a few people learn to use that ends up being quicker and more efficient than that fancy concrete highway because it provides shortcuts to get to the end destination through objective principles it isn't as busy and it is much more enjoyable to walk on. Now take a good long look at that little dirt track. You may well find your way onto it. So you have to understand that there are two ways to run your business, your life's business. One is from a position of profit and one is from a position of debt. One puts you in charge of your life and one puts the system and the banks in charge of your life. Whatever you decide to do is your choice, of course. I am just here to offer you a different perspective. So in summary, to build your dream life, these are the things you need to do. Build your business, take care of business, then take care of your basic needs. Avoid debt at all costs. Invest your profits from simplification and improving your business back into your business. Don't buy trinkets and toys, build your business. And then create new businesses, Build multiple businesses that are creating residual income for you. And then when you have enough profit from all of that, you can buy that dream life that you've always wanted. You can leave the simple life behind and start enjoying a lifestyle without the heavy debt costs, depression and misery that often comes from the way the system encourages you to run your own business. So I encourage you to have a really good think about some of the things we're talking about here. And please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content and just drop a comment below with your thoughts about any of this stuff. I like to engage with the viewers of the channel and I like to hear from you. If you're starting a new business and one of the things you're going to need is marketing training. I have a free course on online marketing and sales, which comes with an exam and certification. That's on my website and I'll put a link to that in the description below. I also run a business buddies training community where there's 58 hours of advanced premium training on all things to do with entrepreneurship and where you can get my direct help in growing an online business. That's also on the link that I will put in the description below. Thanks for watching. I look forward to catching up with you in the next video.